The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon. My name is Tracy Nyer, and I'm with the Virginia SBDC. I'll be your facilitator for today's webinar. For those of you who are not familiar, the Virginia SBDC is the largest and most effective provider of customized counseling and education for small businesses in Virginia. Most of our services are offered locally in 28 locations throughout the Commonwealth. Today's webinar is one of our educational offerings and is part of our ongoing webinar series, Google and Beyond Marketing and Managing on the Web. Today's topic is podcast podcasting for small business. All of our Google and Beyond webinars are presented by Ray Sidney Smith, a web and mobile strategist, author of Solo Most so low mo success social media local and web small business marketing strategy explained and president of w3 consulting if you have any questions during the presentation please type those questions into the question window and ray will do his best to answer them without further ado here's ray sydney smith thank you tracy and thank you to the virginia sbdc network for having me here on the webinar series. Uh, so welcome everybody. Today we're going to be talking about podcasting for small business as Tracy said and uh, so this is the time that if you have a question feel free to ask those questions and we will reserve some time after the webinar. I'm going to actually talk straight through this material. It's got a lot of information to share with you today so we are going to we're going to hold questions probably to the end but please ask questions along the way and I'll be happy to answer them after we're done. Please feel free to follow me at W3 Consulting and hashtag it P for SMB and that'll let me know that this is about podcasting for small business and I'll be able to add, answer your questions on Twitter uh, I am a Twitter person so I love you know talking and answering on Twitter but if you are not on Twitter feel free to shoot me an email I'll have my email address on the final slide as well follow at Virginia SBDC and that's where they put out new information and resources and programs and events for you throughout the Commonwealth so make sure to follow at Virginia SBDC for those kinds of updates as well so with that housekeeping out of the way let's kick into it the first thing I want to impress upon everybody is that podcasting is a 20 plus year old technology and in those 20 years it has been uh, flourishing in relative obscurity but we are at an inflection point with regard to podcasting, and so I cannot make this more, uh, you know, emphatic. Uh, podcasting is not a fad. Podcasting is here to stay, and podcasting is going to be one of the most powerful marketing platforms uh, that ex that ever existed for small business. Businesses. And there are really a, a, a strong number of indicators as well as some really great reasons for that being the case. And I'm going to make the business case for that as we make our way through this afternoon's webinar. As you can see on the screen, there is this is just one slide out of a larger uh, presentation provided by Edison Research. And I put the source there on the screen. If you go to that website link, you will see all of the information related to podcasts. But the primary thing that I want you to take away from this data, if you want to really dive into the data and look at all the statistics about podcasting, is that podcasts are listened to a wide variety, wide swath of the American population. They are also people, the people who listen to podcasts, listen to a lot of podcasts, right? Today we know that uh, roughly about uh, every regular podcast listener listens to about seven podcasts per week. Most podcast listeners are, like I said, they're highly educated, they are affluent, they make it at least 75 to 100 and something thousand dollars a year in household income, and uh, these are split demographics in terms of gender, so you have half uh, you know, just about half male, half female, and uh, and and it's a it's a good percentage of the population. We currently know that about a quarter of the population listens to a podcast regularly, and uh, and those that quarter of the population. So if there are 322 million people on the planet, a quarter of that, you do the math, and. Um, and, and that's the buying population of luxury goods and services, but also everyday goods and services as well. So a really uh, you know keen population that you want to go after, and it's going to be much bigger than that soon, but that's the current statistics, current data on podcast, or, uh, podcast listeners throughout the world. Now, there are a number of reasons why podcasting is growing, and I want to cover a little bit of that today. One is that podcasting for all that it is in terms of obscurity it is it is and having had flourished in obscurity for so long there are a number of reasons for that right podcasting is a highly technical tool that people have to kind of know where to look 
in order to be able to find it. It's not seamless to serendipitously or easily uh, you know, access podcasts. And you have to kind of understand what the podcasts are. And I'm going to define podcasts very soon, and then you'll get a better idea as to why it's it has been so obscure, why people haven't jumped into the podcasting waters. Another reason for the growth in podcasting is the fact that we now have smart home devices. So this Edison research actually talks about the availability of smart home devices in homes, but also uh, the smart technology within smartphones, right? So currently we have roughly about, uh, I think it's 83% saturation of smartphones in the US market, right? So about more than 80% of the people in the United States have a smartphone, which means they have access to the internet on their uh, mobile device that they're carrying around in their pocket all day long. So they have a little computer in their pocket, internet connected, and so podcasts are now available to them where they weren't once, right? But beyond that, we have we have Google Home, we have Amazon Alexa, we have all kinds of Google and Amazon uh, assistant, uh, you know, enabled devices, and these, uh, you know, products are now sitting in our homes, and now we can just ask Alexa or we can ask our our Google Homes for a podcast, and then we can listen to it. So it's now reduced the barrier to entry to a simple verbal command. And uh, and that has, of course, uh, dramatically increased the popularity and availability of podcasts. Uh, the, the next wave of podcasting, though, is really going to be uh, thanks to Google. So Google has, uh, just a few weeks ago, uh, uh, announced through an interview uh, with Pacific Content, uh, a company that, that interviewed them, about the idea that they want to double the number of podcast listeners in the US in the next couple of years, which means they're going to create this floodgate of new listeners to podcasting that otherwise weren't there before. So that's obviously going to change the demographics. It's going to bring more Americans into the fold, which means more middle income and potentially uh, lower income uh, people uh, to podcasting. And that's fantastic. That means it's a bigger voice, a bigger platform for you as a small business owner to be able to, to access your specific audience uh, with your uh, marketing platform that is podcasting. So I really recommend diving into the Edison research stuff here. This is why I left this on screen for so long so you could you could scribble it down. Um, and go over there, look at the demographics, and see who's listening to podcasts right now and their behaviors, and then uh, and then look to see whether or not that's something that would make sense for you. But remember that over the next couple of years, uh, Google has the plans of really making uh, podcasting widespread. And they've already implemented some of that stuff, the ability to to listen to podcasts without even installing an application, making podcasts a part of the search engine. So now you'll actually have a, you know, where you normally would see uh, in Google search, you have your normal Omni search, you have maps, you have shopping, you have images, you have video. Well, now you're going to have a podcasting section of the Google search, uh, you know, uh, results page. So we're going to see a huge number of people now capable of accessing podcasts in a way that, that weren't available to it before. So it's an exciting time to be in podcasting, but remember, podcasting is, is going to be around for the long term. It's not something that is just a passing fad technology. All right, so today's uh, uh, webinar is going to be done in several parts. And in part one, what I'd like to do is talk about podcasting and the multimedia content marketing strategy. I'll talk a little bit about uh, the history of podcasting and then the equipment that's going to be necessary. And I'm going to breeze through these things. So I apologize, I can't go deep in this in this webinar into each of these things. I'm just going to gently touch them so you know that, that there are things you need to take note of and uh, and then you can do the research on the back end or of course you feel free to email me and I'll be happy to either give you a resource or provide you with someone who can help you uh, move that that piece forward. So let's kick into multimedia content marketing. When it comes to podcasting, podcasting is really about in the digital age appealing to two different audiences. You want to be able to appeal to your target markets, right? You want to you want to be able to get humans to know, like, and trust you. And podcasting is an amazing tool for being able to do that. And you want to be able to appeal to Google and the other search engines, right? You want to be able to put content on the web that Google and the other search engines can see, give you credit for, and drive traffic to your websites, right? That's the whole point of having a website is to be able to get people to it, for them to buy into uh, your brand message, then 
uh, know that they have a want, a felt want or need about your product or service, and then convert them from just a lead into a potential buyer, you know, someone who is, uh, you know, going to contact you, make make some kind of introduction um, of themselves to you, and then for you to be able to close the deal, okay? And podcasting allows you to do all of those things all wrapped up in one neat little audio package. The content you give on a podcast establishes credibility. Of course, when someone finds you via Google, because if you're ranking on Google, that means you are ranking above somebody else, right? It naturally gives you credibility because of all the possible people who could have been surfaced by Google, Google chose you, right? It's kind of like every time someone finds you through a Google search, you've kind of won the Google lottery. And podcasts, now that they have their own section within Google search, is going to start letting you rise through the ranks because there aren't a lot of, there likely aren't a lot of podcasters in your industry, in your location. So this is something that I want to make sure you're all aware of. If you want to start a na nationwide or an international global podcast, that is perfectly fine. Everything I'm going to talk about is going to be going to be relative. But who I'm talking to right now today is I'm hoping you're a local business and you're trying to get your local products or services sold. And whether that's B2B or B2C, business to business or business to consumer, this is going to give you the opportunity to be able to establish credibility when someone finds you via Google. Okay. And again, this is whether someone's searching globally or locally, you can, you can set up your podcast to be found in either, uh, you know, modality. Next, when someone finds you in a podcast directory. So podcasts have directories where you can find this content and uh, and subscribe to that content and listen to it all inside of those directories. Uh, so iTunes, of course, Apple iTunes is the largest podcast directory currently. And so, so people want to make sure that they create valuable content for their podcast and properly optimize that content, right? Writing the appropriate keywords and write descriptions and so on and so forth and putting out enough content to be, uh, you know, recognized by those platforms so that you rise in the search engine rankings of those podcast directories as well. And finally, the ability to podcast gives you the opportunity to meet people before you meet, you truly meet them, right? So it's, kind of akin to right now. You know, you're not seeing me face to face, you're only hearing my audio here on the webinar, but in essence, I'm talking to you, right? And there may be many of you on the webinar right now or if you're watching the archive, you're what you you're it's just you watching the archive, but I'm talking to you. Yeah, you, the one who's looking at the screen right now, right? And that's the power of podcasting. You're recording in an asynchronous time frame, that is you're not talking in real time and uh, you know bilaterally because I'm just talking to you, I can't hear you, but I am talking specifically to you, only you, even though many other people can hear at the same time. So that's how people feel the intimacy of podcasting. And, uh, and so remember that you are in someone's ears, you know, so uh, there's a majority of people who listen to podcasts at home uh, and those people frequently will listen with earbuds in. You can actually, it's funny, you can see these these skits online and so on and so forth and people have these anecdotes about families who are all listening to podcasts or listening to different types of entertainment and they all have their earbuds in listening to different things, right? And that just shows how culture is changing, how society is changing. We all want to be entertained exactly the way we want to, and podcasting allows for that. So, you know, son and daughter might be uh, watching different shows on YouTube. Uh, mom and dad might be listening to two different podcasts, all sitting there in the living room together silent, right? So the reality is that podcasting is a very intimate medium, and you are literally in your listener's head. There's a lot of science around the fact that you can't listen to two things at once and fully focus on those things. You've got to you've got to focus on one of those things because your brain can't process that much information at once and interpret it and synthesize, analyze, then uh, you know comprehend, retain, and uh, you know reaccess that information, recall it. So your your brain has to cut its losses on something. So if you're listening to me talking right now and you're actually focusing focusing on what I'm saying, then you can't be listening to somebody else or another conversation going on because it's just too difficult for your brain to do. 
maybe in a hundred you know thousand years or maybe a million years evolution will give us the ability to uh, bifurcate our our uh, hemispheres of our brain and we'll be able to to listen to two conversations at once and um, fully commit both of those um, processing power but right now today you can only really listen to one thing at a time which means that when you have a podcast listeners attention you have their attention and that's a really powerful marketing opportunity. How many times uh, do you have a chance to fully have your customer, potential customers, um, full time and attention? It's only when they're standing in front of you, right? Maybe standing with you that you can do that or you have them on the phone. But now think about being able to broadcast that kind of intimacy across many, many more potential customers. Remember that producing audio content for for podcast purposes is almost purely for human consumption. At some day, Google and the other search engines will uh, transcribe or in some way, shape or form, analyze the text of audio to be able to understand what is in the audio. But right now, when you produce an audio file for podcasts, uh, it's just for the human. The, the computer doesn't know what that file is. So we have to do all of the other work, uh, meaning putting text elements around the podcast, right? So that uh, Google and iTunes and the other podcast directories and the other search engines know what that audio file is all about. Now, it's important for me probably here to recognize, to kind of inform you that um, a podcast is um, for, for all intents and purposes, I'll explain what a podcast is, but the, the really um, you know, uh, granular concept of the podcast is that a podcast is nothing more than a blog post with an audio file attached to it in a special way. Okay, So you have a blog post, an audio file attached to it. So that means the text elements are all the things you would do for, for SEO purposes of a regular blog post. And we've done webinars on this topic before, so I'm not gonna repeat myself, but basically you're going to use the text elements with good search engine optimization for blogging purposes for the blog post component of your podcast. And in the local business's perspective, you're going to localize your content so that it is tailored for Google to find you locally, right? So if you are a small business in Roanoke, Virginia, you're going to obviously be talking about things in Roanoke and mentioning people, places, and things in Roanoke so that so that the search engine knows that that this is about Roanoke. You know, and if you're in, in Tidewater or Virginia Beach or in Danville or, you know, Charlottesville, doesn't matter. You're going to write about the neighborhoods uh, and and localities and towns and country, uh, counties that are situate around you, plus landmarks and otherwise, so that the text elements localize you for Google, because that's what people are looking for. They're looking for local content to buy your local products and services. All right. Very quickly, I want to talk about the uh, the specific definition I use for podcasting and a brief history of podcasts. So podcasting or the non-trademarked uh, term, podcasting is actually trademarked by, mar trademarked by Apple. Um, it's service marked. It's a, it's a service mark of Apple uh, because of the Apple iPod. Uh, but, pod, but, but Apple allows people to use podcast and podcasting uh, now. They don't, they don't um, send you know cease and desist letters like they used to to people so you can use the term podcasting without an issue uh, but the neutral term the non-licensed term uh, has been known as netcasting uh, for uh, internet broadcasting it's the portmanteau of internet broadcasting um, and so uh, basically podcast is the automated medium for audio video or other digital files like a pdf or you know an image of some kind or something like a slide deck you could put a powerpoint deck uh, into a into a syndicated feed that are delivered to listeners watchers or readers on a regular basis it's just serialized content that is um, that is digital okay so this is very similar to a magazine right you subscribe to a magazine and every month every week every quarter something like that you get the magazine delivered and then you read the magazine this is the digital equivalent of a magazine like that, a periodical like that, as opposed to, say, a, a blog, which is uh, is a serialized form of content, but for smaller 
fo smaller format, right? A blog post is going to be, you know, three to six hundred words and is going to be much smaller in terms of scope, and it's sent more often. Uh, and the podcast is kind of that relative next point, okay? Um, of course, Google and the search engines are hungry, hungry hippos, as I like to say, and so they're always trying to gobble up the balls on the table, on the game board, and so podcasting now has kind of required that you have a, a faster publishing schedule so that you can feed the hungry, hungry hippos. So you might have a weekly podcast, right, just like you would have a weekly blog post schedule. Uh, so, so dissimilar to magazines that might be probably monthly or quarterly or otherwise, we're going to do it on a more, more um, expedited basis, uh, more frequent basis. Okay. Uh, I'm going to focus on audio podcasts because that's the predominant podcasts that are out there. And there, but just know that there are other podcast formats, you know, where people do video. Um, it's very rare but people do do video podcasts. People do do PDF style podcasts. Like authors, novelists will will um, release a chapter, you know, like once a month or something like that, and have a serialized uh, novel release. So you could do really cool things with podcasts. But the typical understanding of a podcast is the audio downloaded audio uh, audio content. And this is really the powerful part, right? Because you can download a podcast. You can't usually download a YouTube video or download other kinds of streaming content. The thing that differentiates a podcast is that I can download that file and then disconnect from the internet and have that content still available to me wherever I might be. So if I wanna go take a road trip and I know I'm gonna go through spotty uh, you know, areas of the countryside, well, downloading the podcast means that I'm not gonna lose that content when I get on the road because it's downloaded uh, to the actual computer locally, the, the phone, right? Or could be a computer. Um, but the idea now is that I have the content on my phone, I have it on my device, and now I can go off and do what I want to do, and I'm not going to have to worry about being connected to the internet. Plus, it's cheaper. If I download it on my Wi-Fi, you know, I'm already paying for my Wi-Fi, but if it's, if it's downloading over uh, cellular data, I may have to pay more to download all that data on the cellular network. So, could be very very efficient for uh, accessing content now, and I can I can go ahead and say I want to listen to only these three shows. I want to listen to only these episodes of that show. You get to basically customize your own audio programming for entertainment, education, and otherwise. And that's the power of podcasting. Power po podcasting allows you to be able to create bespoke uh, kind of radio like access to entertainment and information and it's accessible offline when you want it to be okay different from any other platform like that all right podcasting was actually created by the two gentlemen on the screen uh, actually the gentleman on the right david weiner i believe is a harvard fellow or former harvard fellow who coded the language or helped to code the language that eventually became the RSS 2.0 specifications. That is the technology that underpins how websites tell uh, other servers that are looking for podcasts that there is a media enclosure, that there's a digital file available that is a podcast. Okay, so he developed that technology and wrote the language uh, in, in code for that to happen. The gentleman on the left is Adam Curie, the former MTV video jockey, the MTV VJ. And the two of them had started a podcast uh, together in the early days of podcasting. And they are known as the Podfathers, the Podfathers of podcasting, like the Godfathers of podcasting. <laughs> and uh, so these are the progenitors of of the, of the podcasting uh, space, there's lots of conflict over who was the first podcast and who was, you know, really podcasting versus doing internet radio, which internet radio is a different thing. And so there's some conflict over that. But these guys are the ones who really got the movement started. And so let's talk a little bit about how this all works. And I'm gonna again, I'm gonna. Uh, pick up the pace here. So I apologize that I'm glazing over some of these things, but um, but again, feel free to email me if you have uh, specific questions or ask questions in the pa panel, and, and I'll be happy to answer them after uh, we break. Uh, social listening. So social listening is kind of the first step in the process of getting started with 
uh, podcasting. And the reason for that is that if you're not listening to podcasts, you don't understand what podcasting is all about. So you have to listen in order to really understand. So I want you to go out there and do some social listening. What I want you to do is I want you to go to iTunes. iTunes is a free application that you can install on Mac and Windows. And uh, and then once you install it on Mac and Windows, you can go into the podcast store, as it's called, and you can search for podcasts that relate to your personal interests or your professional interests. So if you're, you work in HR recruiting, you would look for a uh, human resources podcast or two or three. You would then, if you are, uh, if you're in sales, if you're in retail, if you're in whatever industry or business, right, whatever thought leader you are, subject matter expert, or, you know, the industry that you serve, you go look for podcasts that relate to those topics and go subscribe to them, listen to them, see what they're doing, and start to get a feel for what's going on. The next step is to go out there and, as I said, I have in comments here, reading and commenting on podcasts and blogs. The reason I say and blogs is because uh, podcasts are basically blog posts with audio attached. So blogs, just like a blog, any blog post, you have comments that you can comment on and have conversation in, right? So what I want you to do is I want you to be reading those podcasts episode pages, and I'll talk about those in a little bit, and I want you to read and comment on them. I want you to engage in the conversation with those people. The reason? You're going to learn what works, what doesn't work. You're going to potentially be invited to be a podcast guest on those, and I'll talk about why that's so important shortly. You'll you'll start to in, interact and engage with your future podcast audience, right? Because some of those people who are listening to that podcast are probably going to want to listen to your podcast as well. As I said at the top, most people who listen to a podcast listen to at least seven podcasts a week. So they are hungry for content and would probably enjoy listening to your podcast as well, right? It's just like with reading. You don't just read one author's work and then decide, I'm only reading Stephen King and I don't read any other author in the world, right? If you read J.K. Rowling, you probably read a whole wide variety of different kinds of Rowling type authors, right, in that, you know, teen um, fiction, you know, fantasy fiction space. You don't just read one author. That means you're not going to listen to just one podcaster. So don't think that you're somehow taking somebody else's podcast listeners or anything like that. You are sharing space with those people. Next up, you want to go ahead and be a guest slash interviewee on other people's podcasts and blogs, right? The reason for this, you go out there, you learn on someone else's time and dime, okay? You're going you're gonna to go out there, and those podcasters who are already podcasting have, have know the ropes. They know what they're doing, or hopefully they know what they're doing, and they can help guide you on how to uh, get started with your podcast by being a guest because you're going to have to make sure you have the proper microphone. You're going to have to make sure you have the proper systems in place, and you're going to have to prepare for your podcast uh, you know, being a guest on as a podcast. So you have to do all of the work on the back end that your future guests, if you have guests on your show, are going to have to do themselves. And so you're going to be able to see it from the flip side, but it also kind of gets you ready for how to do it yourself because you're going to, you're going to experience what that podcast host does with you. And you're going to be like, oh, you know what? I really like the way in which they helped get me ready. I'm going to follow what they do when I go to do my podcast as a host, or I really didn't like the way they were so ill-prepared, or they over-prepared, or whatever, okay? But by being a guest or an interviewee on a podcast, you get the chance of experiencing it from the other end, and I feel like that's way more important so that you can provide the best experience for your guests, and there's a good reason for that, and I'll talk about that shortly. You also want to be a guest blogger on podcasts, on, on blogs. And uh, the reason for that is that you're going to write some blog posts or you'll be interviewed for a blog. And that's going to let people know that you have an upcoming podcast. Or if you've already launched the podcast, you want to be, you want to let people know that the podcast is available. Make sure that you go out there and leave iTunes reviews on the podcast that you start listening to. Okay. And the reason for that is that it's a little bit of 
uh, shameless self-promotion, right? You can let people know that you're in the industry, that you enjoyed this particular episode or this particular podcast as a whole. It's given you some really great ideas about the podcast you're starting, insert your podcast name, and then close it out. Now, of course, use discretion. Don't be too salesy, right? But you could certainly say, hey, by the way, I'm I'm a realtor and I've been looking to create, you know, the, every, every realtor, uh, you know, all real estate is local. So if you're, if you're listening to a realtor who's doing a bang up job in Tuscaloosa, Oklahoma, and another uh, realtor who's doing a podcast based out of Dallas, Texas, and you do reviews for those people, uh, you can let other people know that you're going to be starting a podcast in your area of Virginia. And that way, iTunes and the other people, um, iTunes and the other uh, podcast directories are then going to see, oh, that person's in Alexandria, Virginia, that person's uh, in uh, in uh, Lord Fairfax region, or that person's in whatever other region of Virginia. And, um, and so they'll be able to then uh, come across other people who are listening to realtor podcasts, and they'll see, oh, look, this is a, a realtor who's a podcaster in this area of Virginia. Let me go check out their podcast because the review is telling people about it and you're already going to an established podcast to place the review where other people are going to be able to see it right so use reviews uh, for being able to get the word out about your upcoming or current podcast you must share your podcast episodes via social media uh, there is an ability to do uh, little video clips, right? So you can use video to market it on Instagram as well as on Twitter and other platforms that allow for video. And obviously you can do photo and video, which are snippets of either you or uh, of your, um, your guest uh, um, doing the podcast. Next up, make sure that you're socializing when you're doing your social listening as well as once you start your podcast. Uh, what that means is that if someone uh, if you guest interview or guest post on a blog, right? Guest interview on a podcast, guest uh, uh, write for for a blog. Make sure that you are following the comments that are happening on those blogs. Um, you want to be able to make sure that you um, give gratitude, thanks to the people who are commenting. You know, thanks for that comment. That was very interesting. I agree with you. I disagree with you. All those kinds of things. Um, and if people ask questions on a podcast episode, you wanna make sure that you respond to it, either in text or maybe you come back as a guest on a future episode and answer that question for those people. But make sure that you're appropriate to the platform and make sure that you're responding. Uh, it's really important for you to connect with your community. All right, next up, getting equipped. I'm gonna just cover some of these things. I believe that getting equipped should not be that difficult and it shouldn't be that expensive. And so I always tell people, start out with some starter microphones. I like using headsets because that means I can move my head around, I can stand and walk around and still get decent audio quality. I'm not gonna get studio audio quality if I were a broadcast journalist sitting in a, in a, in a radio studio booth, but you really just don't need that level of audio quality for a podcast. So I choose convenience and portability over audio quality and it's good enough, right? I satisfy the good enough standard for my podcast microphones. That's not for everybody, but it is what it is, okay? So here goes some suggestions. Uh, one is the Plantronics Audio 355. Um, the one that I'm actually talking to you on right now is the Microsoft Live Chat LX3000. And uh, it, you know, the prices of these are very nominal. Um, these all plug directly into your computer and then you then you open up the recording software and you record directly into the recording software that I'm going to talk about in a little while. Okay, so they range in 15 to 50 bucks, and you get a decent one. I I tend to shy away from, although it's highly popular, the blue snowball microphones. And just the reason for that is that they sit on tables and people touch tables and they bang and they knock, and that creates a lot of background noise that you don't otherwise want with headsets unless you're touching your face a lot or, you know, like whatever, it's relatively out of the way. You adjust the microphone so that you can stop plosives, which are the, you know, sounds uh, that are happening 
on the microphone. So you move your your microphone away from your mouth just enough so it doesn't have that kind of you know too close to the mic feel. And uh, and then you can talk. You can move around. You can stand. I like recording standing up because it feels it feels like I project my voice better and I I have a better uh, you know feel of of almost like presenting to a crowd and. Uh, or just having a natural conversation with someone, you you, you know, you stand at a at a at, you know at a party, or you stand with with friends, uh, or you're standing with a client face to face, you you have a better conversation. So I like that. Um, here they are. That's what they all look like. Note that the live chat has the windscreen. So the microphone I'm using right now has that windscreen, and so I really like it because it helps filter out some of the the noise that might happen. Um, but the two Plantronics both are really powerful. Uh, ones uh, the uh, the Plantronic 655 is really a nice upgrade and uh, and I like it a lot um, and like I said blue snowball but only if you're not a desk tapper if you're gonna record uh, after if you're gonna record consistently right so I say start recording with one of those starter uh, you know headsets get yourself going and then if you stick with it then like after the first 10 episodes, you can kind of buy yourself a little podcast gift, <laughs> which is by upgrading your microphone to a better one. Uh, these are my recommendations. Again, everybody is going to be different, so you can do your own research, but these are some that I like. Um, I like the Samsung C01U, which is a USB studio condenser mic, and there are different types of mics. There's condensers and dynamic uh, cardioids, uh, and so um, so, so different ones have different sound for different spaces, right? So condenser mics, you have to have a really, really uh, quiet location. You can't have any background noise because it'll all be picked up. Very, very sensitive microphones. They'll all be picked up by the condenser mic. So if you have a quiet location, really great audio coming from a condenser. But if you're in a uh, a dynamic situation, that is you have other background noise and other things, then you would use a dynamic uh, microphone. And that means that you need to put your face right up to the microphone uh, so that you can uh, you can get the audio from it. But that means the background noise is not going to be picked up, which is helpful, right? So if someone's walking outside your office down the hallway, you're not going to hear their footsteps. Where with the condenser mic, you would probably pick that up. Okay. Um, so I have the Audio Technica, the ATR2100. It's a USB XLR cable um, standard. And I also have a Heil PR40, which I also love. So you can see their prices range. They have different reasons and different uses. Read the reviews on Amazon or wherever else you, you buy audio equipment or electronics and do your research. Uh, just note, some of these, especially the ones that are XLR, um, like the Heil PR40 and the Audio Technica, if you use the XLR functions, you're going to need a mixer and preamp, meaning you're going to need something that provides ghost power. You know, it's not self powered. It's going to it's going to need um, a power source, and you're going to need the cables, shock mount, universal mic arm, uh, in, and a pop filter. Okay, so you're going to need some other things. So it's not just the cost of the microphone; it's also the cost of all the other accoutrement to make that microphone give you solid audio without background noise or bumping noises or any of those other kinds of things. If you're going to record video, and I do recommend that you get a, a good webcam. And the reason for that is that if you're interviewing guests or if you have a podcast co-host, you want to be able to talk to them face to face, even if you're not in the same room. Oh, especially if you're not in the same room. So if you if you're recording someone who's in a different city or even if in the same town, but you're not physically situated in the same space, you want to be able to have a face to face conversation. These microphones and these webcams have fantastic microphones and great video so that you're able to have that kind of experience and then you don't have to have a headset on you would just use the the camera microphone and it has noise filtering and all those other functions built into it so you can have a really clean audio file and and what you're doing is you're just recording the audio from the from the webcam you're not recording the video you're using the video so that you have a better conversation you're literally seeing the person face to face these are the two cameras. Um, I have both of these. Actually, I have an older model. So I listed on there the Key2F, um, the uh, LifeCam Studio uh, webcam. And both of these, by the way, work Windows and Mac. But I've just found that the Microsoft one naturally works better on Microsoft products. And the Logitech one works well on both Windows and Mac. But I have seen it work really well on the Mac. 
uh, and the Microsoft One work really well on Windows. So that's why I put those those there. But you could use either for either platform. But I have a, a prior version of the one on the left, and I have the one on the right. And again, I, I think they're both um, very, very competent tools. The one on the right does have the ability to have virtual backgrounds. So if you want to have a um, a video podcast where you like put a picture of your logo behind you, you know, just like a green screen in a studio, you can actually do that with the Logitech uh, camera, the C922X. So that's pretty cool if you're if that's something that you want to be able to do. All right, interviewing tools. Uh, there are several tools out there that you can use uh, to interview. Uh, Uber Conference is one, Zoom.us, and Zencaster. The first two are free if you're just interviewing. Uh, well, Uber Conference is free all, all told. You can have uh, any number of people on and record audio, but not video. And, um, and, and it creates a pretty good, if everybody has a, a good microphone, uh, it has headsets, good microphone connected to solid internet connection. You can log into Uber Conference and have a really solid recording. Okay, so this is not this is a a web-based phone system. So people can call in by phone, but the ideal is that people are are dialing in, quote unquote, to the conference line from their computer. Okay, with a headset on, so they're they're giving you clean audio, and it does a really really great job. Uh, Zoom is a video conferencing tool, so you would be on webcam, but it can record the audio file, and then you get an audio file um, from it. Now, Zoom has premium plans that you pay for, like I pay for Zoom, but there is a free plan that it gives you unlimited one-to-one, -one, I think, access, or maybe it's limited to some number of minutes, but you know, you you can you can work with that um, that limit. Zencaster is is a paid platform. I think it's twenty dollars a month at the time of of recording right now, but um, it allows you to basically have many people on together so that you're all um, sharing that stuff. Currently, don't use Skype. There's something wrong with their terms of service and. Uh, and so don't use Skype. I know that many people use Skype for podcasting, but right now I do not recommend it. Use one of these other platforms so you can protect yourself. Um, there's image editing that's gonna be needed to be done. I can't get into it, but I highly recommend Canva. There are other tools out there, obviously, but Canva is an awesome tool for podcast covers, editing guest headshots, feature images, and more. If you're gonna do any stock photography for uh, for video, podcasts or if you're going to do any promotional uh, posts like Instagram videos or Twitter videos, then you can go to Dreams Time um, for, for stock photography, iStock photo, Shutterstock for fo stock photography. Um, you can even go to Google Images as long as they're labeled for reuse and you go out there and ask for permission from the, uh, from the owners of those images. If it's not explicit on their website that you can use them, then you can use Google Images that are labeled for reuse, not just any Google Images. And um, so you can go ahead and do that. Um, and same thing for stock audio, you can use the built-in sounds in GarageBand if you have GarageBand. You can record your own sounds and music. So uh, uh, my typical example is that if you need, uh, say, the sound of a, of a, of a drum or for, for some part of your podcast where you're going to have sort of a drum beat, or if you need the sound of a, of a cymbal crashing, well, you just walk over to your local uh, high school and uh, go into the band room and open up your phone and record you know uh, a smash of the of the of the cymbals or a smash of the of the of the uh, drum uh, to get your sounds make your own sounds you have uh, available resources you don't have to pay for these things if you can get a good um, audio recording with uh, with your phone and that's the same with music if you're musical if you have a, a, a sibling or somebody in your in your personal life who is uh, musical have them record their own music and give you uh, the rights to be able to use it in your podcast. You can use a tool like Audio Jungle where you can buy stock audio, uh, which can include all kinds of things that I'll get to shortly. And you can go to the Internet Archive Community Audio Project where in the Community Audio Project, those uh, those audio files are free to use because they're no longer within the copyright realm. Okay. If you want to do stock video, I recommend recording your own, as I said earlier. And most photo sites also include stock photos. So the ones I mentioned earlier, Dreams Time and iStock and so on and so forth, they'll have uh, stock B-roll footage. So if you wanted to create a, uh, you know, an Instagram post or something like that, or if you really are creating a video podcast, you can use those for transitions and otherwise. All right.
let's kick into part two and I'm gonna again I'm gonna speed up a little bit because we have a lot more to cover in the time we have left um, I'm gonna talk about some of the recording techniques um, some post-production and hosting and then talk about getting on iTunes Google and Stitcher so recording techniques you have four options in my opinion there's obviously many many ways to look at this but in general I look at it as four different uh, formats for hosting a podcast you can host alone it's you plus a, a co-host or a series of co-hosts maybe you plus someone who has specializ specialization in a related field right so if, say if I'm a nutritionist then I would have someone who is a fitness trainer and maybe someone who was uh, was a massage therapist and maybe someone who knew Reiki and um, some of the other ancient healing practices spiritual practices and so you have this kind of um, you know, a group of people with different specialties, and you all come together to bring that health and wellness perspective to the podcast. Um, you can you can host even with a co-host, uh, and just have guests who regularly uh, come onto your show. So you can have a you plus guest format, and then you can have a call-in show. Uh, this is the least used of all of them because it requires some management of schedules and making sure that you have a uh, an existing platform of people who are regularly asking questions. So, uh, you know, people who are willing to call in, literally, they they call in and ask questions. And you can do this in a live broadcast environment where people can listen. Uh, you're recording for the podcast purposes, but people can listen live. Or uh, where it's in a closed session, people are calling in live, but it's not being broadcasted to anyone. You're just recording it and then publishing it after the fact. So you really want to think for yourself, what is going to be your typical show format? You can always do a show here and there that are going to be a different format, but you really want to pick one of these four you know, uh, formats and stick with it. Consistency is important for making sure the people who are listening to your show uh, are getting the thing that they want, right? So they're, they're listening to your podcast for a reason, and they want to make sure that they're getting the product they subscribe to. You can record using different platforms. You can record using Audacity, which is a free open source software. Uh, you can record directly into your computer as well using GarageBand if you have it, uh, if it was pre-installed on your Mac or you purchased it. There are audio recorders, you know, the handheld devices as well as desktop-based devices that allow you to record um, from your microphone uh, directly into those devices. You could use voice memos on your on your iPhone or iPad or iPod. Uh, those are really fantastic microphones and with proper placement you can actually get really good audio. If you're on Android and you have a high-end Android, I mean you know if you're using one of the essentials, uh, one of the essential phones, if you have Google Pixel branded phones, if you have one of the Samsung uh, Galaxy S series phones, um, if you have one of those high-end uh, you know, the Nokia 6, you know, those kinds of high-end uh, uh, Android devices, those typically have good microphones on them, and you should be able to use one of these three apps, the audio recorder app, otter.ai, and Parrot, okay? So you can, if it's just you, you could probably record directly into one of these apps um, on your mobile phone and, and be just fine. All right, post-production. Let's talk a little bit about editing. You're gonna to have to edit the audio once you get it, and you can edit, again, using Audacity or GarageBand. So if it's if it's just you recording into your computer, right, you alone, uh, you, can, you can go ahead and record into one of those apps, like I said, uh, but if you are, once you're done, now you need to edit it, and if you're already in Audacity or already in GarageBand, you can edit it right there. So that works out pretty well. What are you going to edit, though? Um, that requires us knowing a little bit about the audio terminology, and so I'm going to try and cover these really, really quickly. Intro and outro is basically the audio portion that begins the podcast. The outro is the audio portion that ends it, right? And it's just natural, right? You know, usually sometimes you'll have a voiceover artist or some kind of music that brings people in. A segment is a portion of a podcast, so it's just a, a specific portion of audio you know, you talking or whatever the content is um, of the podcast, and they're usually uh, fungible. They they should stand on their own. It's almost like a mini episode of a podcast. Teasers are the radio technique of being able to uh, uh, cue people into something that is upcoming. So you're teasing them about something upcoming. Promos are the parts of the podcast where you talk about your business or service, right? What's your product or service? Or if you have a guest on your show, uh, maybe you talk about their product or service, right? That's a promo. Or if you have an ad, 
if you actually end up uh, uh, selling ads for your podcast, uh, the promo would be the ad spot. Okay, the 30 second, 60 second ad spot, 15, 30 second, you know, 30, 60 second ad spot. ID tags, you need to really pay attention to what is an ID, ID tag. You're going to look for what's called an ID3, I as in Igloo, D as in David, the number three. You're going to look for an ID3 editor for podcasting. And so you're going to look for an ID3 editor, and the ID3 tags or the ID tags are the tags, the metadata that's with that's held inside of the MP3 file that you produce for podcasts, and that tells the podcast directories and and all the other places where your podcast lives some really key information, the title of your podcast, where your website is, copyright information, what your podcast feed is, the image file associated with your MP3, and so on and so forth. Very, very important tagging um, functionality. Bumpers, transitions, and bed music are all the various types of music that um, that accent or provide emotion to your podcast. So bumpers tell us that something has ended and something is beginning, right? So you might start and end a segment with bumper. Transitions tell us that something is happening. It's a pause or a change in content and it may be longer, right? So you might have a bumper that leads into transition where you have maybe a few seconds to, to up to you know 30 seconds of, of some kind of music. Um, I don't know why it would be so long, but there, there are opportunities, you know, situations where that happens um, where you have transition music and then bed music is music that's played underneath the audio file. So like if, if I was a really monotone speaker, if I just, if I used one tone the entire time I gave this webinar, right? That robotic voice, you might put bed music underneath it was that was that was fun and cheery and energetic and cool and that way it made my voice sound more energetic and interesting than listening to my monotone voice, right? So I try to use vocal variety so that I'm changing tone and pitch and I'm getting excited about the material because I am excited about podcasting. I really do love podcasting and, and I hope that you can hear that in my voice when I'm talking about it. So I don't need bed music, but some people do because some people are just sound boring. <laughs> <laughs> and it's okay. It's understandable if you do. And uh, but bed music can be really useful in other cases where you want to provide uh, maybe some some light music that sounds like you're in a child's bedroom when you're giving a bedtime story, right? Little little um, twinkle twinkle little star, um, you know, provides a sense of emotion. Um, or if you're saying something really dramatic and you want you know Wagner or Vivaldi playing in the background, uh, that kind of thing. Just make sure you own the rights to play the music. Okay, very, very quickly, because I'm, uh, I, I, we need to close up soon. Um, so I'm gonna try and give you as much information before we um, get to that point. Post-production, um, you're gonna edit background noise, you're gonna clean up any background noise that happens as you're able to, you're gonna close out any long, you know, you're gonna shrink long pauses, take out any ums, flubs, and ticks, and only the ones that are, that are the most, uh, you know, um, caustic to the ear. You don't have to take out every um, not every like, you know, basically all the, the words that people use as, as uh, filler. Um, and then you would add logos, bumpers, transitions, and bed music, all the different types of audio musics that tell us that, you know, about the, about the um, transitions and the emotion happening within the podcast. You could have no music, by the way. I have several podcasts where I use no music whatsoever. So, you know, you can totally use music to, to, for emotional effect and, and polish, or you can have no music whatsoever. So don't think you have to use music here. It's, it's something that you can work, you can do, not do for a while and then graduate into. Many people ask me how much time it takes to podcast. I usually say as baseline one hour plus twice the length of the episode. Okay, so if you have a 30 minute podcast, if you do the math, take an hour, two times a half hour podcast is another hour, that's two hours of time. So that's how much time, once you get everything set up, right, all the infrastructure, all the stuff in place for, for the podcast to be set up, that might take many, many hours. Um, but once you have it all set up and you're efficient with the tool, right, so if you're if you're just doing a you only podcast where you're recording into Audacity and editing in Audacity and you know how to use the tool, well, it's gonna take you for a 30 minute podcast about two hours. So you, what I tend to say to people is you wanna kind of limit yourself to the amount of time you have necessary to be quality while still having a, a good substance 
you know, to, while still having good substance so that you can have a good podcast. But you can do a five minute podcast, you can do a four hour podcast, but generally this is about the amount of time it will take then. So a four hour podcast is gonna take nine, nine hours to, to administer, okay? It's gonna take the four hours to record, four hours to edit, and at least 60 minutes in admin time. Episode formats, always tell them what you're gonna tell them. Give people an agenda up front. What are we gonna talk about? How did I start this webinar? I told you what we were gonna talk about, right? Now I'm telling you what we talked about, right? And if I had the time in this webinar, I would go ahead and summarize what we talked about, but I won't have time, so I'm not going to. <laughs> um, and then finally, you wanna tease people. At the end of this webinar, uh, Tracy is gonna tell you next, the next topic and the next date, right? She's gonna tease you to let you know about what's going to do, what's, what we're going to be talking about next time. And that's going to get you to register sooner rather than later so that you can be sure you have a seat for the next webinar. Okay. So you want to basically tell everyone in every episode what you're going to tell them. You want to then uh, do the episode, give them the information, and then tell them what you told them. Give a quick summary of what you covered. And this just keeps people alert to where they are in the podcast. Uh, and then teasing, of course, is really, really important. You want to do this for segments and episodes. So if you have longer segments that are that are contained, right? You're doing a segment on, uh, just like a radio show, or like if you watch the Today Show, right? Or if you watch SNL, right? Each skit on SNL is a segment, right? And it has a beginning, middle, and end. And then they stand on their own, right? And then uh, SNL when they when they cut to break they're going to show you a little a little teaser to show what's coming up so that you stay tuned between commercial breaks. Well, you still need to do that same thing in podcasts to keep people's attention. Um, I'm going to skip some of these items just because that's not necessary for today. So um, one, remember that your blog post is for Google, so you can do a transcript. You can have your guests uh, bios and pictures of your guests on your blog post portion of your podcast. You can do uh, summaries of the episode where you actually type up a blog post that's a summary of the episode and then the audio file is attached. And you can do teasers at the end of those blog posts about the upcoming episodes, right? So get people excited who are subscribed about what you're gonna talk about in the future. The show notes portion of any uh, podcast episode are basically the references and citations of what you talked about in audio. So if I told you about some websites to visit and some other kinds of items in the show notes, I should put links to those things so that they, that you can access them. For example, if I said, hey, you should go check out this blog post I, I wrote, or hey, here goes this product we're talking about, that product's on my website, here goes a link to that product, product and that should show up in the show notes. Uh, segments, I've already talked about segments, but basically segments are, uh, they should be episodes within episodes, right? They re represent a complete uh, construct, even if it's just part one of two part episode where part one are these three topics about this topic, and then segment two is parts three, four, and five, uh, four, five, and six of that particular topic. You wanna segment those pieces so you can you can have different segments that can stand on their own. Uh, you should make sure that you have guest guidelines. I actually have a guest guidelines document, and I'm more than happy if you email me. You'll see my email address shortly when we get to the Q&A. And uh, you can go ahead and email me, and I'll be happy to send you the guest guidelines document, a link to, to download it. You can totally just copy it and use it, you know, change the information to be tailored to you, but at least you'll see what one looks like. But provide your guests with uh, with some uh, with with guidelines to help them um, help you look good. Um, think about adding marketing swipe files. These are files that you create with documentation so that you're able to give people the uh, the marketing language, right? So you can write some tweets from their perspective as a guest. You can write some, you can create some Instagram images, Twitter images, Facebook images, and give that to them so that when their episode comes out they can share them and they didn't have to do any additional work. All they have to do is post it to Facebook and they're good to go, right? Make it make it stupidly simple for them to share your content with their community. Uh, before recording, always remember to preview the show with them. This helps them reduce nerves and uh, have an understanding about how, about how the flow of the podcast episode will go. So that requires you to prepare ahead of time so that they know 
uh, what you know about those things. Okay, so we're um, we're running a little bit out of time, so I'm gonna I'm gonna jump to just a couple other items uh, that are really important, and then I'm gonna turn this over to uh, Tracy. So just another minute. Uh, for, uh, I just want to cover some of these things. Um, um, in relation to getting on iTunes, Google, and Stitcher, which are the three primary podcast directories that you want to get on, you want to make sure that you go to uh, podcasts, plural, podcastsconnect.apple.com, and you will submit your podcast there. You have to have at least one podcast episode before you can submit to Apple and the other directories usually. So make sure you do that. Have an episode already published and then go to podcasts. Uh, podcastsconnect.apple.com and then Apple gives you the instructions for submitting your podcast from there. Okay, really simple um, uh, solution there. If you go to G, G is in Google, dot C is in O, Charlie Oscar, forward slash podcast portal, you then again will log in to the system and Google will walk you through the process of submitting your podcast to Google Play Music Podcasts. For Stitcher, you're going to go to partners, plural, partners.stitcher.com and again, create a username and password or log in if you already have a Stitcher account and you'll be taken in and then they'll give you the, uh, the tools to be able to register your podcast with Stitcher. Okay, um, so after after you do all of that, make sure that you are doing all the things you normally do to promote your podcast the way you would a blog or a YouTube channel or otherwise. Take advantage of all of the the um, the uh, marketing channels that are available to you so that you're being you're able to do this. Um, you know, be able to create your platform. So make sure that you're talking to your customers, adding your podcast into your email signature. Make sure that you put your podcast on your website, on you know, up in the front, just like you would have blog and the navigation thing. Make sure that you have all of those things available to you and um, and spread the word about your podcast. So um, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Tracy for Q&A and closing out, and I'll be happy to stay as long as we need to answer questions. Great, thanks, Ray. Um, we just have a few questions at this point. Um, the first is, did I miss the suggestion on the length of a podcast? Oh, so so the length of the podcast is as long as it needs to be to get across your point. Um, and 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 so there is no there is no one length. Now remember that there are some people out there who say that you should stick to about 22 minutes, which is the uh, general length of the commute of the average American, right? So the average American has about a 22 minute commute. And so a lot of people talk about that. However, there are podcasts podcasts out there that are two hours long. There are podcasts out there, I, I have a podcast that is two minutes long. Uh, there are podcasts out there that are 30 minutes long and 60 minutes long. You pick the the model that fits the general type of content you want to share. So if you're thinking about sharing an interview, right, how long does it take for you to really warm up with a, a podcast guest and get into the interview? Do a few interviews, see how it goes, see what content is good. Is that 45 minutes of, of discussion time? Is it five minutes of discussion time for the for the topics that you're discussing? Feel it out, get those episodes ready, and then try to stick to that length for the rest of the time. Just remember the rules about segments, right? So if you're gonna have multiple segments, just make sure that they do all of the requisite things. So if you have a guest on, you're gonna start, you're gonna tell people what questions you're gonna talk about, you know, what topics you're gonna talk about with the guest, then you're gonna talk to the guest, and then you're gonna close out with, this is what we just talked about. In the next segment, we're gonna talk about these things, right? Have a break, come back. Hey, we're gonna talk about these things with this guest, talk about those things, and then close out again with a summary of what you talked about, tease people about what you're gonna talk about the next episode. Great. What are the image editing platforms that were listed on that slide? One was, one was Canva and then what were some of the others? Yeah, so 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 all you need to know is Canva. I mean, the, the reality is, is that if you need to do anything more sophisticated than Canva, you probably will will uh, naturally go to Adobe Photoshop 
within the Creative Cloud suite. Uh, but if you have if you have specific questions about what you need to do, shoot me an email. My email address should be on the screen now. I'll be happy to answer specific questions, but you shouldn't need more than Canva. Okay. And what time frame does Google accept expect to double podcast listeners? They said two years. Um, Which is amazing. Yes, that is amazing. Well, Ray, thank you all um, for participating today. Today's webinar was recorded and will be posted on the Virginia SBDC website under live webinars and recordings. Tomorrow you'll receive a follow-up email on the webinar, and there'll be an evaluation link to in that email. If you could please help us to continue to improve our training by taking the time to complete the evaluation, we'd appreciate it. If you want to complete Fill out the evaluation now. I did post it in the chat window. And here's my teaser. Our next webinar is June 14th, and it'll be on documentation, I mean, sorry, document automation in the cloud. Thanks, everyone, for participating today. Thanks, Ray.